All right. We had two out of four. Let's see if we can get three out of four. Today we are reading another issue of Wolf the Barbarian. Oh my god. And look at this one. This one. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. Check this out. Look at this. Look at this. Good. Good. Great. You got a damsel in distress. She's scantily clad. He looks strong. Muscles are ripped. He's been working out. But then look at this. Look at these goddamn things. Can even Wolf the Barbarian survive the revenge of the rat creatures? I don't know, man. I don't know anybody could survive that goddamn revenge. But yeah, it's it's cool. Let's see what's up. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus. And we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Bard William. Is that real? I wonder if that's real. Wolf the Barbarian faces the Colossus of the Iron Citadel. Down or we die in the flames from his enchanted arms. Is that the Colossus shooting out flames? We'll find out. His family gone. His mentor slain. Searing anger and visions of bloody vengeance are his only companions now. These and the bladder named Rimstraddle. And every smiling swordsman whose thirst for adventure rivals in strength Wolf's unyielding desire for revenge. One night of water bugs for bedmates be enough for me, Rimstraddle. I take it you are not loath to depart from lonely Varga? Varga? Bah! This place has saturated my pores and all, but rusted my elbows. Let us be off to a better climb at least. If this map be trusted, a place called the Iron Citadel lies in our path. But a few hours ride from here. Perhaps there we shall find the adventure you seek. Yet there is no need to travel that far to find a flight worth their nettle. For hardly have the two begun their journey when look! Yonder, wolf! A caravan beset by thieving dwellers of the marsh. Hideous rat men! I had heard they'd peopled this desolate swamp. A filthy and disease-ridden lot they may be. I am almost loath to engage them in battle. Still, the merchants below could use our assistance. Aye, and perhaps they shall reward us handsomely for our unusual expert aid. Thus, into battle the heroes ride. Eat cold steel, slime dwellers. Jesus, look at Excellent drawing. Ex very good drawing. Look at those rat men. They are horribly hideous. Not cute at all. Not cute at all. By the fire, demons, beard, you are a most welcome sight, Northlander. A skilled blade is rare in these parts. Aye, and my champion's sword sings as sweetly as mine. Though usually he puts a price upon his song. Ha ha ha, come back, little ones. Wolf and I have but wet our blades. Have you no heart for battle true? Fear not, Rimsturtle. They shall return. Such vermin withdraw only momentarily to remain ever near, biting at one's heels. True, stranger. They shall be back. Yet they will not return until they add to their number. Most likely, they will also be mounted upon fierce fighting Cardoos. What is a Cardoo? Is it a kangaroo? Is it close to a kangaroo? I fucking hope so. Meantime, can we tempt such swordsmen as thee to join our caravan? My master pays well. Mayhaps, whither art thou bound? Harumph! Introductions first, if you please. Of course, sire, warriors. May I present my master, Minister Clifford of Cardiff. The... I am sure they have heard of me, Captain Greto. But swordsmen, nay, are saviors. What may we call you? Wolf of Baronholm and guild swordsman Rimstridle, my lord. By your leave, lord, who might this fair lady be? Oof, that's the lady you're going to be banging by the end of this, I promise you. That's how these always work. That's how it all... Goddamn love stories, fucking B-plots. Anyway. My, my daughter, Tyretha, and the betrothed of a very important man known as Modeo, an alchemist of supreme and controller of the Iron Citadel. Pardon, Captain, your mercenaries? Oh, by the seven gods! Come back here, you foul-livered sons of toothless jackals! Slew-bellied cowards! They fear the ratmen's return. They have taken the horses, and we are lost without steeds. Nay, Captain, two remain behind, and we have our own mounts as well. 
Still, our situation is dire, and our number now too few. No longer dare we wait the Rat Pack's return. We must make immediate haste for the safety and shelter of the distant citadel. You, maid, shall ride with me. Now don garb much more suitable for such travel, and do so quickly. Aye, sir, damn, he's pushy. You're pushing the poor lady. Be this what you had in mind, warrior? It will suffice. Oh, my God. A maid such as she would more than suffice for, for whatever I have in mind. See? I called it. It's just because I read too many of these goddamn comic books. I already know all their little fucking tricks or whatever. Can we carry naught with us? I am loath to leave my wedding finery behind for these beasts. To what, maid? Surely you do not believe those creatures would why wish to wear such garments? Hark! Dust clouds the ratmen approach. Then we must depart with equal speed. Hopefully the thieving beasts will pause to inspect our wagons before giving chase. What are those things? Are they like rams or horses? They're kangaroos. They are kangaroos. Look, they're riding fucking kangaroos. Oh my god. Oh my god. I give this issue a pass just for that. For Christ's sake. Nay, youth, such luck evades us. These ugly seek not goods, but rather blood. They are most vengeful lot, and their hoppers may soon come cl soon close the gap betwixt them and us. God, that's fucking great. Of all the fantasy creatures I've ever come across in my travels, a rat man riding a kangaroo is way up there, guys. Remember this moment. This is going to go down in history. D screenshot this. Goddamn screenshot this. Rat man riding fucking kangaroos. Okay, moving on. Yet, instead, the rat men soon slow down, then turn tail. That stench! It must be what drove them from our heels. And truly, who can blame them? I am no connoisseur of such ugly smells myself. This, then, is the Iron Citadel, the mills of Drakenroost, pouring forth fumes of near-lethal poison. Hold tight, maid! These walls surrounding those smoke-belching towers appear devoid of an entryway. Yet there must be some way to gain our refuge within their lover's roost. Now, the youthful Lord Baronholm takes command, leading the small band towards a hardly visible vertical seam in the citadel wall. A crack, which with mysterious suddenness becomes a gaping portal, and not a moment too soon. Really? What is it? Is it a gate? Apparently, revenge lust has blocked the nostrils of a few of the hardier rat men. Let us attain the safety of these walls quickly. Within a single heartbeat, the welcome portal is gone, viciously snapping, nearly biting off the fleet hooves of the last horse, leaving a solid wall for the rat men to simply and abruptly crash into. Above, reptilian statuary becomes more than smirking decorations, as jaws drop ominously open, oh fuck, and the foul poison, far more lethal than ever-present fumes, spews forth, dripping like saliva down upon the man-beast, rewarding their persistence with fiery death. Fuck those rat men. Look at him burning. Oh my god, he looks like he's in agonizing pain, and I fucking love it. While within... Welcome to a world of industrial supremacy, weary travelers. We have been expecting your arrival even now. Lord Modeo awaits your presence, and on the way, a quick tour of the mill. Oh, what have the gods wrought? Aye, it would seem this place was created by a deity quite mad. Yet I venture that this smoldering hell was in truth built by men. Yea, men it was, or rather one man above all. Modeo alone is responsible for this wondrous place. And hell it is not, rather, tis a steel mill, far greater than any in all of Patarn, and Brind combined. My darling Modeo told me he governed an important mill, but never did I imagine it would be so grand and great. Look, youthful warrior, look upon limestone, coal, and coke. Smell of the carbon gas. See the streams of molten metal and acid smoke and fire. Pondle the cooling pig iron and consider the open hearth blasting iron into steel. An impressive display, yet how many men's bones were ground to nothing in the building of this monstrosity? And why the need for slaves? Cannot the machines, rather than men, perform such heavy tasks? Your judgments are too harsh, youth. There is much you misinterpret here. 
Friend Wolf, it would seem the ugliness within these walls knows no bounds. Cast your eyes upon the statue before us. Aye, there is no doubt. It is ugly, yet I suspect it of being more than a statue. The arms, they are moving. Split, down, all of you, flatten thyselves upon the pavement. It is a trap. No, no, it cannot be. We are the guests of Modeo himself, but why? Ha ha, forgive me, my friend. I meant me no harm. I aimed far above your heads, I assure you. This was but a jest, a minor display of the power possessed by my favorite toy. I call him my Colossus. A jest? What kind of callous madman finds humor in the desperate attempts of others to preserve their lives? Come, you hear the voice of the Great One. Now prepare to be in his actual presence. Modeo, so glad I am to see you that I will forgive even such a display as you just staged. There is much we must speak of. Hold my smelting pot. Allow me to introduce myself to your friends. I am Modeto Dothirak, alchemist, supreme controller of the Iron Citadel, stepson of Mordric Malmoriak. Mordric, my sworn enemy, and you his son? No, Wolf, stop, someone please stop him. Keeper of slaves, I shall rob your father of his son, even as he robbed my parents of life itself. Impetuous warrior, if it would but serve to injure Mordric, I would gladly give my life. But nay, I am no favorite of his, nor is he endeared to me. Back, guardsmen. This barbarian will at least hear my story before killing me. Then if he still wishes it, my death, so be it. You are not alone, wolf, in your hatred of Mordric. Listen, Mordric Malmoriak married my mother to gain control of the Iron Baronies. When she died, he sent me to this place, more to be rid of me than anything else. Thus, at a rather young age, I found myself controller of a foundry so poor, so ill-equipped, that it could produce only the crudest of steel, despite the countless pitiful slaves forced to work from dawn to well beyond dusk. I believe Mordric hoped to break the spirit of an insolent stepson by sending me to such a place, but I would not be broken, nor did I desire to break my men beneath the feet of my ambition. I offer you the chance to be free men again, to share in the building of a foundry far beyond anything existing in the known world. We are one with you, Modeo. My technological genius aired us greatly as we transformed a barely functioning factory into a well-oiled, wondrous machine. You see about you now. While beneath the surface we constructed a hidden land of living quarters, a land of comfort, a place of laughter. And when the great edifice was completed, each of the former slaves was free to go, and your fortune his to take with him. Go, if it is in your hearts to leave, but stay, and in your staying you shall truly reap the rewards of your hard and long years of work. Hell, Modeo! Many remained to live in luxury, their only chore to act as slaves, whenever the black-hearted spy birds of my stepfather flow low o'er our foundry. This citadel, then, is not the work of Mordek, but is rather a monument to my own fantastic genius. I am in control, complete control. Every process has its beginning and its end, here beneath my nimble and all-powerful fingers. Surely, if all this is quite profitable as well. An interesting tell, yet it would seem unlike Mordrick to allow anyone so much freedom as you possess. You understand my stepfather well, barbarian. Were he to know the true extent of my power, surely he would try to subjugate me his awesome power. But so perfectly have I planned every move, he has yet to... Fools! Fuck. Look at him. Mordrick! I have played you for fool, Modeo. And were it not for the presence of your young barbarian friend, perhaps I would continue my game, allow you to keep the delusions you already possess, but now my plans decree otherwise. You control nothing, witless stepson, nor was control ever yours. Even your supposed followers pledge allegiance to me, as they ever have. 
Coward, you seek to taunt with words, for you are afraid to battle like a man. Even that thing you call your Colossus is in my employ. By the gods, never did I build true mobility into the Colossus, yet now it is breaking free of its mooring. Tyretha, my love, into the corridor now with your father, then hasten to the south end of the citadel. Wolf, please stay, I have need of your help here. Mordrek has turned my most ingenious toy against us. Certain death shall be ours, unless we destroy it now, before it eats away through the walls about us. Two, I needed to effect its destruction, for these valves must be lowered within perfect timing. It is the essential factor. Now! To realize that Mordrek knew from the beginning, tis enough to make me doubt even my own awesome genius. Let us hope, though, that there is one aspect of the Colossus he is unaware of. Why has it not yet? Its destruction shall come, and when it does, we had best be far from here. In the meantime, ready thyself, Captain. The approaching guards are within the employ of a sorcerer most evil, the sworn enemy of my companion friend. The Shelby Child's Play Bladder. These soft city dwellers shall be easily dispatched with ease even by a mercenary as old as I. Captain, please allow me to join in the fun of my chosen vocation as well. By the chariot of the gods, I should have known you two would be quick to engage in mortal combat. With my genius, I prepared even this. Eventually, come my dear, there is a secret portal along the wall somewhere. Die, Pons of Mordrick, for Baron Home I strike. What about the fucking, what about the Colossus? Tyretha, Minister Cloudford, come, the portal has been found. Wolf, Bladder, hurry, there is no time to tarry in hand-to-hand -hand combat. By my euphonious utterances, what a huge chamber we enter, yet what a strange device it houses. Nay, traitorous snakes, only friends may enter here. What now, Lord Modeo? Into the gondola, all of you. This, gag bag, this gas bag shall carry us to safety, and I am certain even Mordek knows not of this toy. A gas bag I had heard of them before, and yet, good. There be hearty winds, enough distance shall we span in the time remaining to be merely shaken. Shaken? Of what do you speak, beloved? I speak of the death of a young man's dream, and to the monument he had built to it. Perhaps it was a foolish dream. Surely a deluded past dies as well. Boom! There goes the Colossus. Explosion! Another fucking explosion. Thank God, because explosions at the end of comic books, that's the good shit. Fuck, look at that. It took out the whole fucking mountain. What was that Colossus? A fucking nuclear bomb? By the seven serpents, what has transpired? You aided me in this, friend Wolf. The Colossus is no more, and with it has gone the entire citadel. I could not leave such a magnificent place in the hands of such as him. Surely Mordrek would have transformed it into an evil place. You control the spy birds, you stunted fool. Why was I not informed that explosives capable of this damage as this were secretly about the citadel? Or of the balloon? But... But, sire, I... Be not sad, my darling. Tis an adventure we embark upon. You have lost much, but you are not alone. Together we shall begin life anew. Not entirely anew, my love. Though I had little time for alchemy, love still did I manage to produce enough solid gold bards to nearly weight down this ship we stand upon. A fortune, my dear. A palace of production, my perfection worth many ransoms, gone, completely destroyed, leaving the futures of my daughter and myself up here in the air. In addition, I long ago sent compatriots of mine to the south, far beyond the barriers of Mordrick's control, to purchase a fine mansion of great comfort. There shall we live. Solid gold bars? Now this is a son-in-law with which to be proud. Horses! and of a fine, strong breed. Can you land this rig? Nay, not upon such terrain as this, though we could fly low enough for you to jump. Yet, friend Wolf, why not join us instead? Yes, 
Come with us to the Southland. I hear it is a far better place to live than this. Nay, fair Tyretha, it be north I must travel. I wish an audience with your stepfather. I wish his death. Luck travel with you, barbarian. And what of you, bladder? You seek adventure? I hear, and the south is of younger and wilder land. If you wish to hire my blade, then as a guildsman, I must pledge myself to thee. You have sworn yourself to be a man of honor, worthy of any guildsman allegiance. And besides, my future of wolf took bleak offerings. Little chance for a prophet. Now, wolf, while our ship brushes the ground, and the coil of rope will help thee in the capture of a worthy steed. Go in peace, friends. You have been a boon, companion Rimsturtle. Worthy friends and all. No sooner do the warrior's feet touch the ground than he is pursuing a chosen mount. He wastes no time pondering the departed balloon nor thinking of the companionship lost. Once again, searing anger consumes him. Visions of bloody vengeance are his. A tapestry of Mordic Malmoriac and a dying and a thousand dying deaths. Dying a thousand deaths. I fucked that up, but you get the point. And then Wolf ponders what lies ahead. Sword and sorcery unleashed. And then look. The world of Wolf, the barbarian. Okay, there's Patarn. There's the desert of Kesh, Azur Karbajia, where we, where we started. Ramakesh, where the two gods fought. And Patarn, the spires of screaming demons. The, and then there's the Iron Citadel right there. Between the Shifting Sea and the Bay of Turklands. Where, so where is... There is... Okay, there's Drakenroost. And there's Bearholm. And there's Castle Silverkeep where he lives. Huh. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is really cool. But it makes me feel weird because I don't think that we're going to get to the end of the Sorceress. I don't think... Because the next one is the last issue. And look, he has all of this way that he has to travel. He has to go through the Iron Mountains and through the realm of the, the Mountains of Madness and through the Draken Roost. And it's like... Yeah, I don't think the next one's going to be it, but... This is really great, though. Like, I really like this these issues. I really... There's something about these sword and sorcery books that are just, like, really high quality. But, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the next one. But that's it for this one. If you liked reading this comic and you want to read more comics with me, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and donate to my Patreon. But, until next time, nerds. Next time, it all ends. So, stay heroic.